book is probably much more of a kind of orthodox presentation than, than what you've just seen. Um, so, I'm English, but yes, I live in, in Porto in Portugal. I'm at the Sound and Music Computing Group, which has been running since 2007. So we are within a larger engineering science unit called INESC, or INESC in Portuguese, and um, we're also linked with the University of Porto as well. So they have a digital media, multimedia programs, masters, PhD, and this is our, our sort of collaboration with the university, but technically we're a kind of independent um, establishment. Okay, so what's the aim of the work that we're doing? Computers and music in the most general context. Uh, we want to be able to understand music, generate music, model music, this kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, so the main areas that, that we're looking at, music information retrieval, human computer music interaction, uh, musical robotics, audio processing, very much kind of uh, a wide look, I suppose, at, uh, at music as much as, uh, as much as possible. So what I've got today to show you, as build, I'm showing you, I'll demo this, uh, applica this web application called Rama, and then I have two other things to show as well. So hopefully, if time permitting, I should get through all of these um, for you to see. Okay, so this is a slide of the demo I'm about to show you. Let me uh, just jump out of uh, PowerPoint now and uh, start this running. Okay, fingers crossed it's going to work. All right, so RAMA, what does it stand for? Uh, Relational Artist Mapping. So it's built around two big music technologies, Last.fm and YouTube. And the idea really is to harness the um, music recommendation, artist similarity ability of, of Last.fm, but pre present this in a, in a nice visual context where you have some, some extra information, and then link this to musical content from YouTube. So we're not dealing with the videos, just with the audio. So, um, and we have two ways to, to visualize the space. I'm going to have a go typing in an artist. It should so complete. Let's have a go, Erica Badu, see what happens. Okay, so we have this floating network here of artists and tags. So where the artists are, are similar, they're linked together, and if I hover the mouse over a particular artist, you will see the tag words that are particularly related to, to that artist, uh, shown in red, and similarly I can hover over a tag, and this will highlight the um, the, the artists that are related to this tag. Okay, and it does a little bit more than this. I can, um, fingers crossed, reduce the complexity of this map, make it simpler, maybe very few links here, or I can make it rather more complex. Okay, so many things to explore within here. Um, I've built on top of this, maybe I'll just turn it back a little bit so I can, so I can see what's going on. Um, so like I said, this, this, this last FM element of um, seeing the links between artists. On top of this, um, I mentioned the, the YouTube content. So what I'm going to try and do now, if this works, this should start playing some music. Ooh. I get some volume. I can skip through to another um, another track. Um, if I like it, I can save it. I can then move on to another artist. Um, I can create a map around them. I think maybe that was a step too far. Um, okay. Um, but in addition to looking at artists, I can also look at Last FM users. I'm gonna look at the content of a friend of mine, see what he's been listening to. Um, this is different kind of music, sort of more jazz stuff. But anyway, so it could be a nice way to visualize your own collection or the kind of music that you like and um, really rather than let music recommendation happen in a fully automatic way, you can kind of visualize the space and really pick the content that you want, save the playlist and then you have some, uh, some chance to listen to it again later. So that's demo number one. If I jump back into my slides, um, okay. 
So the second demo I want to show you is related on a um, less of an analysis project and more a kind of music creation type project. So the project itself is called um, Kinetic. It's um, about rhythm, gestures, this kind of thing. And um, what I'm going to show you is a short video demonstrating some rhythm generation, um, again with some, some user control and some kind of automatic elements. Uh, it's built as a plugin for Max for Live. Um, there's a web link there. It may be available already, if not available soon. Um, and one of the key elements of it, which, which will become apparent in the, uh, in the video, is that you can control the amount of variation in the rhythmic pattern and this idea of complexity. In more musical terms, we're talking about syncopation, but it's a sort of unexpected event that happen in the music. So let me have a go with this now. So it's a nice way to make some kind of interesting complex rhythms and also play around with some, some polyrhythms as well by changing uh, metrical structure. So, okay, let me jump out of this, sorry for switching around a lot, uh, okay. Okay, and then I have one more demo where I actually have to, uh, to do something a little bit more. So this is a, a more of a kind of fun project that, we, uh, that we've been working on which recently won a competition in Portugal. Um, it's called Gimme the Blues. It's an iPad iPhone app which has some kind of rudimentary understanding of jazz and blues structure. What we have here is the interface. We have two instruments that we can play, uh, a trumpet and a keyboard. You can see the keys are not really uh, as you'd expect. Um, so really what you do, uh, you set it going. You have drums and double bass which will play and then you can hit the keyboard whenever you like and then this will generate some meaningful chords. You have kind of low pitch at this end, high pitch at this end, control over volume, lower sounding here, higher volume here, and similarly with the trumpet. And I'm going to do my best to demonstrate it um, live. We'll see. Um, okay. All right. So, yeah, there's no visual because I'm going to actually try and do it. So, um, Okay, so it looks a little like this.
but it had some, uh, some further modes as well. Maybe I won't demonstrate them all. As you can see, my musical skills are a little uh, limited, but enough to make something kind of musical, I, I, I think. Um, so it has some extra modes for, um, uh, for some different uh, minor blues and some other, some, other, um, some other styles, some other instruments as well. There's, there's a piano, some different trumpet sounds, this kind of thing. Um, and this should be available quite soon, I think, in the App Store. I have no idea how much it's going to be. I suspect not very much, but um, yeah, I have it here on the iPad and also on the iPhone if anyone's interested in having a go themselves. Um, I guess it's sort of music for dummies a little bit, but um, I enjoy it a lot anyway. Um, and then one final plug for um, the conference that Michaela mentioned, Ismia, which is happening in October 8th to 12th. Um, we're just in the process of reviewing papers, sorting out a really kind of high quality academic program. There's also a music program running along with this, a nice trip to uh, the European Capital of Culture in there as well, and something I'm organising the day after, a specialist workshop on Groove. So uh, if anyone's interested in Groove, this is free, come along, you would get to see um, in Esk where everyone's working. Um, yeah, Porto, it's a great place, nice coffee, nice cakes, come. <laughs>